So the Jimmy Butler trade rumors have died down quite a bit over the past couple of days ever since the Wolves made it clear that if you're going to try and trade a Butler that you better be ready to give up your entire franchise in the process, aka asking for Ben Simmons in exchange for Butler from the Sixers and Miami reportedly made their final take it or leave it off for Butler on Thursday. And now there is still Houston who are reportedly still going after Butler but are having a hard time finding a third team to get involved with this trade. So for right now, until the Wolves come down to the asking price for Jimmy Butler, the talks are pretty much dead, or were pretty much dead up until right now. As we got reports out yesterday saying that the Milwaukee Bucks are preparing a trade package to offer the Wolves for Jimmy Butler. And according to ESPN Zach Lowe, that trade package that the Bucks are preparing to make is centered around Chris Middleton. Now look, I don't doubt that the pairing of Giannis Antetokounmpo and Jimmy Butler could be a deadly one-two punch, especially in the Eastern Conference. But if the Bucks did trade Middleton in exchange for Jimmy Butler, Let's be real here. They would be risking it all. I mean, all the Bucks really have right now is Giannis Antetokounmpo and Chris Middleton. Sure, they have Eric Bledsoe, and maybe Bledsoe will be better this upcoming season than it was last season for the Bucks. Now that he has a better coach in Mike Budenholzer, and they also have Malcolm Brogdon, who was a solid role player. But Giannis Antetokounmpo and Chris Middleton are the two core players that the Bucks have right now, and Milwaukee isn't really in a position where they can afford to lose Middleton for nothing if you were to ask me. And that is exactly what would happen if they were to trade Middleton for Butler and then Butler were to leave them in free agency. So like I said, they would be risking it all. Then again though, there is another problem with this. And that is that Chris Middleton himself is about to be an unrestricted free agent this upcoming offseason. Since I don't see why he would pick up his player option with the Bucks, teams will be willing to offer him a lot more than the 13 million that he's set to make next season in free agency. So the Bucks might be kind of scared of him leaving regardless and are going to look to flip him no matter what, even if it's not necessarily for Jimmy Butler. But then you think about this and it's like, why I earth with the Wolves trade Butler for Middleton. That doesn't help them out at all in the long term since Middleton will probably just leave them for nothing in free agency too. So this whole trade of Butler for Middleton in my book is an extreme long shot to go down. If anything, the Bucks would need to try and find a way to trade for Butler while keeping Middleton at the same time. That would not only give them better odds of coming out of the Eastern Conference this upcoming season, but it would also give them better odds of keeping both Jimmy Butler and Chris Middleton. But the odds of that, the odds of them actually being able to land Butler without trading Milton are extremely, extremely low since, like I said before, they don't really have much else to offer. So if you think about it, the Milwaukee Bucks are really in an undesirable position right now, where they have Giannis, a once-in-a-lifetime type of talent on their team, but he has an appetite to win. He says he'd like to do it in Milwaukee. He has said it time and time again that he has no intention of leaving the Bucks and would like to win a championship in Milwaukee. But... Unless the Bucks can pull off something huge, I don't see how they're going to get the necessary talent around Giannis in order to win a championship with him. And maybe that is why just a few days ago, a former NBA GM said that there is no way that Giannis is going to stay with the Bucks after his contract expires in a couple of years. So, dang, this video went from extremely optimistic about the Bucks being able to get Jimmy Butler to talking about how screwed the Milwaukee Bucks might actually be. Yesterday when it came to Los Angeles Lakers, we had to talk about Kyle Kuzma and the Lakers experimenting with him at the five spot. And today we had to talk about the Los Angeles Lakers once again, but this time in regards to Lonzo Ball. As both LeBron James and Luke Walton said yesterday, exactly how surprised they have been with Lonzo coming back from his injury and how great he's been since coming back from his injury so far. As LeBron James said yesterday that to him, it doesn't even look like Lonzo Ball had a surgery done on his knee. Yeah, I mean, I didn't know he was gonna be, um, uh, you know, full go so fast, you know, and uh, I mean, he's been going through live drills the last, you know, two and a half days. So, I mean, his bounce is there, uh, his speed is there, and so I don't even know if he even has surgery. <laughs> <laughs> it's only 20, maybe that helps him. <laughs> and then Luke Walton reportedly said this. Coach Luke Walton said he was shocked how good he looked over the previous few days as far as feel considering he hadn't played 
since his rookie season ended in April. But of course, Lonzo still isn't about to play yet either. He's going to miss the Lakers preseason opener tonight, and who knows if he will be ready for the second game. Luke Wallen says he's going to try and bring Lonzo along slowly, that there's no need to rush him back. And that for now, Rajon Rondo is still going to be the starting point guard for the Los Angeles Lakers, at least until Lonzo is fully healthy and ready to go. And from the sound of things, at least how they're making it sound, that might not be too much longer. One preseason game against a Chinese basketball team, and people are already losing their minds over how good Luka Doncic seems to be, with articles now coming out claiming that he is for sure going to win Rookie of the Year. And look, all this hype. I can't necessarily blame them for it. I mean, there have been very few players that after I see them play live for the first time that I'm just like, dang, he's actually really good. And that happened with Luka Doncic yesterday. Look, he said before he was drafted that he would compare his game to kind of like Ben Simmons and LeBron James. And after watching him yesterday, I did certainly see similarity. But at the same time, he was different. I don't know how to best describe how Doncic plays. Look, I wouldn't say that he's as fast or explosive as Ben Simmons and LeBron James are when they're attacking the basket, but Luka Doncic moves with finesse. He's got that finesse step. And then of course the jumper he has already leagues better than LeBron's was when he came into the league. And it goes without saying that he has a better jumper than Ben Simmons. And then defensively, he was better than I expected too. Once again, this was against the Chinese team that was lacking in the talent department to say the least. So it's hard to say how we will fare guarding against actual NBA players, but the defensive awareness was for sure there. And he also had good hands on the defensive end too. Overall, I just didn't see any big glaring flaws in his game. There wasn't one thing I could point to and say he needs to get a lot better at that. Like, there was nothing. So, this is the starting five that the Raptors are going with, huh? Well, might just be the best defensive starting five in the NBA right now. As instead of Jonas Valanciunas starting at the center, the Raptors have decided to go with Serge Ibaka as their starting center, giving them a lineup of Kawhi Leonard, Serge Ibaka, CJ Miles, Danny Green, and Kyle Lowry. Hey, that might not be as much star power as Golden State and Boston have, but I have a feeling that that won't matter as much with this lineup. The interchangeability on the defensive end is lethal. And not only that, but on the offensive end too. Everyone is a threat to shoot it. Their spacing is going to be incredible. Now all they have to do is develop some team chemistry and wait for Kawhi Leonard to shake off that rust from not playing for like a full year. And you could probably tell that he was rusty just from watching him yesterday. Even the coach, Nick Nurse, said this after the game. I think everybody saw Kawhi was shaking off some rust, but you can obviously see the level that he has. He was just playing off instincts a little bit and saw some gaps and he took them and they came at him pretty hard and he bounced right back up. Kawhi Leonard's healthy. Kawhi Leonard's playing and the team itself seems like they're about to be pretty freaking good. Can't really ask for much more right now if you're a Raptors fan. So the Utah Jazz played against another unknown foreign team. Not too much to say about this game besides the fact that Grayson Allen looks pretty good. Really good actually. So that's a good sign. But in general, yeah, not really too much to say about this game at all. It was kind of embarrassing. And there's not much to say about this game either. It wasn't against the foreign team. It was two actual NBA teams going at it, but just not much to say since it was just preseason. Though I will say that Stephen Curry was going berserk to start the game. And then I think his coaches and teammates had to remind him that this is just the preseason, so he needs to chill out a little bit because the man was looking like he was about to drop a smooth 50 last night just based off the first five minutes of the game. The Timberwolves did, however, wind up winning, though, 114-110. to Derrick Rose looks like he's going to be a starter for the Minnesota Timberwolves and he played well it's just hard to say anything about the Wolves at the moment since we don't know what's going to happen with Jimmy Butler and what they're going to get in return for him yet anyways that is everything for today guys let me know what you think about all of this down in the comment section below do you think Jimmy Butler could end up on the Milwaukee Bucks what do you think is going to happen with their future in terms of Chris Middleton possibly leaving next year and them just being stuck with Giannis with no real way to get more talent around him it's going to be very interesting to watch Milwaukee over the next 365 days remember to like the video if you haven't already and subscribe to the channel so you can stay up Today with everything that goes on in the NBA on a daily basis. Thank you once again for watching. You guys already know that you are the real MVPs. And until next time, I am out of here.